Kurt McPhail is the program director of the Mary Black Foundation. He's also the founder of Global Bike. He's been with us in Spartanburg for the past 17 years, coming from Ruby, South Carolina, the jewel city. All right. And he's here today to talk to us about how one child thousands of miles away helped him to change his view of the community, both locally and globally. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage, Kurt McPhail. Fifteen years ago, I stepped foot in Hartzell Orphanage in Mutari, Zimbabwe. I had barely crossed the threshold when a young boy in a red jumpsuit grabbed hold to my leg and didn't let go. I was 21 years old at the time, and this was my first experience in Africa. I spent the day with my new friend. We slept together under a tree, played, laughed, and as a good college student, I went up to the nurses before leaving and said, tell me a little bit more about these children who have come to Hartzell. The nurse said, clearly, many of them have been left at the border, their parents thinking Zimbabwe would provide them with a better living. She said, many of them have been orphaned by HIV and AIDS, and sadly, most will not see their fifth birthday because they're HIV positive. It was the last part that took my breath away. And before leaving, I walked over to my new friend, gave him a hug, and in his ear, I whispered a promise in a language he wouldn't understand, that if I could do something in my life to make lives like his better, I would. Twelve years after that promise, four years ago, five friends and myself sat in a coffee shop right around the corner. We had $850 on the table and a belief that bikes could transform the world. They had transformed our lives, our health, opportunities for recreation, even this wonderful city that we call Spartanburg. We thought that we could transform the world and we bought 10 bicycles in Zambia for community care workers. Now this was the start of global bike and for me it was the fulfillment of a promise I had made to a young boy thousands of miles away. I have done a lot of thinking lately about what it was that took me from promise to fulfillment. And I've determined it's simple, it's other people. It's doing good together. You see, it didn't take very long for us to realize that we were on to something special with what we had done in Zambia because we heard back from the caregivers that were using our bikes and they were able to travel three times as far, see four times as many clients, and carry five times as much stuff. You know, currently we work in seven countries around the world with dozens of partners, partners who provide us with stability, the opportunity to further our message, you know, but when we look for our partners, we look for more. We look for things like the ability to address tough situations. We look for partners who are willing to share with us both the success, the failures. We want partners to share with us in the journey. In Zambia, we work with organizations who work with orphans and vulnerable children, some of which find themselves heads of households at age 10 or 12. In Rwanda, we work with reconciliation ambassadors who travel village to village working to heal the wounds of genocide. And in Kenya, we work with youth organizations providing hope through sports and education. Now, when we think about doing good together, it's what I think a really simple formula. It's the combination of passion and conviction multiplied by a willingness to go beyond ourselves to create something a little bit different, something bigger, something better than we would be alone. But you know, it's the willingness really that's the toughest part. Tough because we have to face this tough togetherness question. Am I willing to give up some of the credit? Am I willing to share in the success and the failure all together with someone else? For Global Bike, the answer to that tough question has always been yes. And our outcomes speak to the fact that doing good together works great. You see, there's 50,000 orphans now around the world who've gotten needed medical and educational support because of our bicycles. 
3,300,000 folks affected by the genocide in Rwanda are understanding the concept of reconciliation. And tens of thousands of youth are understanding the power of sport around the world. You, you see, earlier this year, we were approached by an organization called Kilimanjaro Initiative. They work in and around Nairobi, primarily in Kibera, one of the world's largest slums. Every year, KI takes a group of 12 youth from Kenya to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. This year, they wanted to add a bike ride from Nairobi to the base to it to raise awareness for economic and environmental sustainability. They reached out to Global Bike to see if we could partner with them. And in true good together logic, needed a strong partner. But together, we faced this question. You know, this is bigger than both of our organizations, and what should we call it? We settled on Ride, Climb, Transform because we intended to do each one of those three things. You see, we were able to really do that because we started in Kibera, right outside of Tanzania, and gave away half of our bikes. Totally, we gave away 115. Half of them were in a place called Kibera. Now, it's the, Africa's largest slum. One million folks call Kibera home. Homes made of whatever they could find. Homes and lives where survival is an everyday challenge. Now, to say that Kibera was like hell would truly be a Western definition, not a Kiberan definition, I might add. Because you see, there was a speaker named Rafael Amunde, who was a speaker at TEDx Kibera. Yep, they had one there. Amunde said this. He said, Kibera for him was a university said it taught him everything he needed to know to change the world. Specifically, he credits the civil servants he met in his multiple incarcerations as being the connection to achieve his goal of building a high school within the walls of Kibera. Now there are two. You see, my stay in Kibera was very short, but I was able to walk hand in hand with the children. I was able to play soccer on a reclaimed soccer pitch and I even watched a young girl dig in a sewage ditch for metal to recycle, to survive. You see, it was short, but it was a university for me because it reiterated the fact that doing good together works great. You see, it's really just passion, conviction, multiplied by a willingness to change, to do more, to create something new and bigger and better. We left Kibera and biked 270 miles to the Morongu Gate at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. We set aside our bikes and then climbed to the highest point in Africa. We did it with dozens of East African youth all along the way. Each pedal stroke, each step made sweeter by the company, by the calls, by the fact that we knew together we were transforming not only each other, but the people that we interacted with. You know, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and the entire trip was really summed up best by one of our participants, a young 16-year-old girl from Kibera. She said, you know, the challenges that I face every day are just like the challenge I face climbing that mountain. She said, to be successful, it takes two things, one step at a time and the help of those around you. Together, Kilimanjaro Kibera Spartanburg, right here, right now, to transform this place, to transform the world, we need each other. We need what I want to call the global bike effect, to take us past the limitations of ourselves to create something better, something that transforms each of us. Thank you.